You know, a lot of times we talk in these very abstract terms and you walk out go, that sounds really good. I have no, no idea how to incorporate this in my practice. So I'm going to give you the philosophy, what's the trends, and then I'll walk you through step by step the mechanics. I think all of that is important. So we're going to talk um, about FUE more in depth in a moment. Okay, so we'll go through that. Regenerative technique, as I said, is something really huge. A large, how this started back was um, in 2011 uh, when I was in, in Alaska for the hair meeting. I was looking at this slide from Gary Hitzik in New York and I was just blown away. It's like he did the PRP on one side, same closure, and I said, okay, I gotta try this. So I, I started this journey of, of looking at if this stuff actually works and, and the more I did it, the more I was blown away that hey, this stuff really makes a difference. And again, no financial affiliation with any company or even the books I sell, all, the, all of those are, the, I, get, I collect no honorary on my, on my, pra, on my uh, speeches, my courses I run or the books I write, all the royalties go to charity. Um, so we'll be supporting stopping sex trafficking and a lot of bad things in this world by, by buying the book, just to let you know that, but I don't get any money off of it. Um, but this whole idea of regenerative medicine has been a, a huge thing. I started with uh, this, this uh, Tologel system and um, placing the PRP at the very beginning of, of recipient site design and now I do it afterwards and I still see great results. I now use this Angel system. The reason I mention these brands, people just want to know, what do you use? There's going to be a question at the end, so I'm just telling you what this is and I don't make any money from this company. Um, but the Angel system allows me to titrate in a way that I can't with other products, but it's a much more expensive um, centrifuge, much more expensive uh, uh, package altogether. And some of the thought was you needed to be at around 1 to 2x uh, concentration physiologic, but now some thinking is 5x. I'm between 3 to 5x. I'll walk you through when I use a 3x and when I use a 5x, and that means five times physiologic platelet concentration um, at, at when I'm doing it. This is this fancy chart that uh, you don't need to even memorize, but it's how I start thinking about um, how to dilute everything. Uh, Anthony Scalfani uh, gave a talk about how uh, platelet-poor plasma, and this is actually his slide, uh, he let me use this, uh, of just how active platelet-poor plasma is. So I think we, we think, you know, PRP, PRP. I use all my PPP. I use all my platelet-poor plasma in the, in the case, and I'll tell you how logistically um, I, I actually use that product. So A-cell, A-cell is basically an extracellular matrix, decellularized porcine bladder matrix. And it's used in plastic surgery for burn victims and you know, uh, fingers that are missing, et cetera, that they regrow. And um, this has been a huge component to my, uh, how, I, how I'm actually delivering better outcomes. And I'm gonna tell you how I've changed uh, since my last lecture. I've, I've actually increased my A-cell seeing even better outcomes. So I'll talk a little bit about how I use this. Uh, again, it's hard to understand this until I actually walk you through the mechanics of it, but I do use this. So how do I do this? Uh, my mix for PRP and A-cell and the and A-cell. The uh, for surgery, this is what I, what I, what I currently do. Um, again, there, as I told you, I've used other mixes, all of which has worked well. So you're welcome to take a, uh, well, I, they said no photographs, but you know, to be honest with you, I actually have a slide that says take a photograph. I, I would encourage you to take a photograph of the slide I'm showing you just because it's, you have to write all this down. But I basically take 120 cc's of whole blood, mix it down, down to uh, 14 cc's at 7% hematocrit. Now why 7% hematocrit? There's a lot of argument that you know, PRP must be, have no um, blood in it. And I disagree with that. And the reason is that there's, I was talking to the scientific head of, of, this, of this company, says that you know, most of the active platelets are centered around that blood. In addition, I'm not an orthopedic surgeon placing this into a sterile joint. I, the, I'm gonna have blood everywhere. So why the heck can I have blood there? Unless someone can tell me that, someone can come up to me and tell me this after my talk, I'd love to know why I can't have blood in this. But I, 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 I use 7% hematocrit because I'm pulling as much active platelets as I can. I'm mixing that with 100 milligrams of, of A cell and essentially um, I'm mixing 14 cc's out of the usable, um, out of my 120 cc's spun down. So this is how I break it down. I have about five or 10 cc's of paleopore plasma left that I use um, in the donor wound after I close it. I, uh, I use 15 cc's of platelet-poor plasma. You'll hear this in the next slide, come, or in a couple slides coming up for my initial storage of my strip. So my strip comes out. That shock of taking a, a, a strip out, you want to put it somewhere physiologic. So I put it immediately into room temperature platelet pore plasma. So that gives that minimized shock. I actually learned this from an Indian doctor in a presentation last year. I said, that makes sense. Why should I put this into any other storage medium than, than it's the own plasma right when it comes out? 
Then I have, out of that 14 cc's, I've got this 9 and 5 mix. 9 cc's of the PRP and A-cell I'm using in the recipient bed after I finish making recipient sites. And I'm wearing goggles because that this stuff can spray because you have those little open recipient sites. And then I use 5 cc's for my graph. So what does that mean? That means, and I, you'll see the slide where I, I'm going to walk you through step by step for this. But I have, so right after right before those graphs are placed into the, into the head, into the scalp, I just coat all the graphs before placement. A common question I get after, uh, after these talks is, you know, is it hard to place because of this coating? No, it's actually pretty easy to place. There's really no difference using PRP and A-cell in terms of placement. Um, this is the slide that probably for most of you are most interested if you don't do hair restoration and you're interested in incorporating some level of PRP. Again, I've had multiple colleagues call me, so this may save me a phone call. Uh, but no, you're welcome to absolutely call me or catch me in the hallway anytime to talk about this. But it's, um, what I do is I, I mix, it's the same 120 cc blood I pull, and I pull about 30 cc's out, which gives me about a 3x concentration, and I mix 200 milligrams. So in other words, two packages of, of A cell. Um, and then I inject it, into, I put a ring block around the scalp. One ring block I really like using is articaine or septicaine. 4% with a uh, quarter percent ep uh, epinephrine. It really works well because it doesn't hurt as much during the injection. It provides profound anesthesia. Uh, and I just do a ring block around the scalp with a little vibration device. The one caveat with septicane is you must know the toxicity levels. It, there is a toxicity gradient. So I actually have that if you want to email me. Uh, it's Dr. Lam, D-R-L-A-M, at L-A-M facial plastics with an S dot com. I can send you my uh, the dosing for septicane. But uh, put that in, or you can just use lidocaine. I inject the PRP all over the scalp, you know, just a 25 gauge needle, and then I massage it into the scalp to make sure it's equally distributed in the subcutaneous plane. It's just sub-Q. So people say, is it intradermal? I use, you know, hair bulb. I just inject it in the scalp. Then I use a micro pen, nano pen. I honestly don't think the manufacturer matters, uh, but just, uh, sorry for the manufacturers out there, but just needle the bejesus out of this. So we're, I'm sitting there for about 15 minutes needling, 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 needling until it looks like a sunburn. And that uh, really will help stimulate the hair follicles. It, it's, and th there's always a question, do I need to do this seven times, 10 times every month? I have found a single time is enough. And how, when do you repeat this? It's when you start seeing the hair. So some people, they may need it every year, every six months, every three years, every two years. It depends on their rate of hair loss. So a large part of how I gauge a second session is I follow them, watch them, consult with them, and make a decision with that. So hopefully this one slide is helpful for those that don't do hair that may be interested in dabbling in this field without you know, getting texts and all that kind of stuff to do, do this with. Activation of it is so critical. This is the thing is that by, if you just stick the PRP and the A-cell in there, don't do anything to mechanically uh, activate it, you're gonna have a problem. So you can use thrombin, but that, you know, that's an animal product, bovine animal product, can cause hypersensitivity. You can use calcium gluconate, I just don't think that's strong enough. Um, you can even add a calcium gluconate, but really what I found that works in my hands when I'm doing a standalone non-surgical intervention is, is a lot of needling, so a lot of needling. And if people ask, can I use a derma roller? I've done that. I think it still works, but there's a lot of trauma to the hair shaft because there's a rotational injury. So I, I like to use, a, um, you know, the way I do it, I just do this up and down, up and down, up and down. And this is just showing some PRP results here. Uh, this is just showing you a gentleman that I did a, a surgery around 2011, the middle, oops, sorry, the middle one, and I didn't have great growth, I added PRP. Oh my God, these are the ones that at that junction of 2011 when I started just adding PRP into a second session, I'm like, oh my God, what a difference, what a huge difference. So the other thing I've been adding, I added this about two years ago, and so I can see in a stage fashion, this has been incredible. The liposomal ATP addition itself stabilized the um, potassium ATP pump, so it helps um, not let the, uh, the cells blow up. And really, when you're dealing with uh, ex vivo grafts, this, this has made a big difference. Again, I will walk you through how I use it, so don't, don't worry about it. Uh, I'll give you the recipe in just a minute. Hypothermosol is a storage medium for uh, liver transplants and things like that. This, and combined with ATP, has been really, really awesome in terms of, of, of improving my take. What have I seen? I've seen my hair grafts grow f earlier, and I've got, you know, I've got, I really believe one of the best assistant teams in the world in terms of their, their care. But since I've added ATP hypothermosol, besides earlier growth, I've seen finer growth. Because I think the, if you have 
good text. They really should not cause almost any trauma during, for the insertion of the graphs. But I think the mechanical element of just placing a graph, no matter what it is, especially delicate FUEs though, you can have trauma. And using these, these regenerative techniques, I've actually I've seen the graphs to look cleaner. I mean, and I'm so anal with looking at my graphs, so I want you to understand that I'm getting very good graph growth and beautiful graphs, but these make better graph looks. So I encourage you, if you haven't incorporated this, to think about it. This is my mix uh, coming up of how, of how I do it. So take a photo of this if you like. Um, this is a cleaner slide than my old slide. It was really busy. I try, hopefully made this year easier. So what I do is I, I take 50 cc's of this uh, liposomal ATP. I take 10 cc's of ATP out of it, mix it with 100 cc's. That's how hypothermal soil is sold together, okay? And, uh, and then you see the one, two, three down the bottom. I'll explain how I use the one, two, three there. So, and then I take 40 cc's of the remaining ATP, mix it with 400 cc's of plasmalite, and I, I take 300 cc's of that mixture to spray on grafts and just to keep everything moist, spray on the scalp. And I take 100 cc's of this and put it in a little bottle, give it to the patient, and they spray themselves every hour after the procedure. Uh, and now I'm making them stay up all night for the first two days, but even before I did that, they were still getting good growth, so I, I don't think it's critical. But you just want, what I've heard is that, and there's no real scientific literature to support this, it's more anecdotal, the first two to five days of constant spraying with ATP to minimize that shock is really, to me, an important thing. And, and also, what's really interesting is that uh, one of my colleagues found that placing graphs, um, placing graphs uh, in, into a hypothermosol ATP in the fridge can lead to a 96% survival at two weeks, just letting it sit there. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, think about it. You should have all your graphs dead in 24 hours. So this is, I think this regenerative techniques for graphs is a huge thing. So the bottom of the sl slide here is, I take the donor strip, I already told you this in a previous slide, uh, and I put it in 15 cc's of PPP when it's out. Then I take the sliver and the dis dissected graphs and I place it into, uh, in, into, these, into the mixture on the left, the 10 cc's of uh, ATP and 100 cc's of hyperthermosol. Uh, and then, as I said earlier, to incorporate that earlier slide, I coat the graphs prior to placement with the five cc's of PRP and A-cell. And then uh, I'm going to skip over some of these things here because this is 